If there's a common thread that connects all of Robert Eggers' films, it's his thematic preoccupation with isolation. The lighthouse sees two lone men gradually lose their minds while confined to a small, stormy island in the Atlantic Ocean. Fueled by sexual frustration and masculine self-worth, our characters descend into an abyss of paranoia where nothing makes sense, until Winslow is alone, mutilated, and has fully embraced a maddened hellscape that the setting has devolved into. The Witch follows a similar pattern. It's the family's lack of contact with the outside world that accentuate their misfortune. The isolation shifts their paranoia into overdrive until they have finally succumb to their fear of the witch, making Thomasin embrace the supernatural forces that haunt her former home. We see shimmers of this thematic isolation in the Northmen, with the Icelandic settlement being sufficiently separated from the outside world. However, Eggert pivots his focus towards a more visceral, and perhaps a more human, theme. In a broad sense, while his first two films are more concerned with what we don't see, The Northman is concerned with what we do see. Instead of the story being driven by a witch lurking in the woods, or whatever Lovecraftian force that takes hold in the lighthouse, it's Amleth who holds agency over his own film. In doing so, the story focus favours what motivates him, vengeance. The Northman, at its core, is a story about vengeance, and how far someone will go to find it. One of the things Eggers does best across all his films is instill a truth to the setting, approaching period folklore with such historic fidelity that we experience it in the present tense. Eggers treats historical beliefs with the same sense of certainty that the people of the time would have. The witch inhabits a world so dominated by Puritan beliefs that to commit sin is just as terrifying for us as it is to the characters. Similarly, the Northman treats any supernatural qualities just as they would have been treated in 10th century Iceland, that is a force just as real as the weather, or as the sky, or as the volcano that looms over the story's setting. As such, from the outset we understand that these characters have different values to us. With our modern comforts, vengeance isn't something that plays much of a role in our day-to-day -day lives. But for a Viking, vengeance is what you live by. This lust for vengeance is instilled into Amleth from childhood, with him swearing to avenge his father before he's even died. Enemy sword, you must avenge me or forever live in shame! I will, father! I will! My place will not rest till it's drunk the blood from his open neck! It's a combination of vengeance and Amleth's perceived destiny that puts the story in motion. When Bjork's Slavic witch tells Amleth of his fate, that he is to go to Iceland and avenge his father. There is no choice, there is no doubt in his mind to what he must do. He's a 10th century Viking and Vikings must fulfil their destiny. He values vengeance above all and finally the gods have stepped in, allowing him to unleash such fury. With no hesitation, he cuts off his hair and makes himself a slave, heading off to Iceland. <laughs> It's once he arrives that he can begin his bloodthirsty crusade. Instead of going straight to Fjolnir and just killing him, Amleth decides to make his life a living hell, terrorising the settlement and gradually disposing of his men. It's during these scenes that the Northman is most reminiscent of Eggers' previous two films, showing a small, isolated community antagonised by what they believe to be supernatural forces. Amleth takes on the role of the Witch in the Woods, or whatever Lovecraftian force took control in the lighthouse, and the isolation of Fjolnir's village renders them helpless. Imagine the film from Fjolnir's perspective, isolated from any larger civilization, and left to withstand a mysterious invisible force that wants to consume your tiny settlement whole. Fear not, you're the first of many. A film of this nature would be in line with what we'd expect from Eggers after his first two films, but in pivoting his focus from the terrorised to the terrorist, it marks an evolution as a filmmaker. By taking this fresh perspective, Eggers puts vengeance on a level playing field with the pagan and Lovecraftian forces that dominate his first two films. This adds another level of historic fidelity to the Northmen, as vengeance formed a core part of Viking beliefs, just like paganism and nautical legends were a core part of the world his previous films inhabited. In all three films, the characters are haunted by their own folklore, however the Northman sees Amleth as an embodiment of vengeance, and as he is the protagonist, the film takes the perspective of the outside forces that antagonise the civilised world. In taking this perspective, it opens up the door for questions over the morality of vengeance. 
we're encouraged to ask ourselves whether or not Amalef is a good person. It's clear his vengeance has moulded him into a ruthless killer, raiding a Slavic village and leaving numerous orphans, essentially becoming the very thing he's sworn to destroy. Amleth has grown up in a world of Viking raiders, and as a result he's conditioned to fight for everything he has. When he goes to get his special sword, we see him first fight the undead skeleton who he's taken it from. After winning this fight, it's revealed to purely be in his imagination. He's not used to getting something without fighting for it. Even the games they play in Viking society have a level of violence to them. It's during the medieval baseball game that we see the first signs of Amleth himself doubting his savagery. After seeing a brutal fight, he looks on with what appears to be disgust. However, mere moments later, after saving his half-brother Gunnar, he indulges his animalistic instinct and repeatedly headbutts Gunnar's attacker. Of course, much later in the film he does kill his half-brother and his mother in the name of vengeance against Fjolnir. But due to the setting the film inhabits, the film offers little inclination that Amleth's actions may or may not be immoral, as the standards for the day glorify battle and murder and violence and vengeance. It's only when viewed through a 21st century lens that we begin to ask questions over the ethics of his quest, questions Amleth or anyone from his time would never even consider. To make a judgement on whether or not Amleth is a moral character is counterproductive, as he inhabits such a radically different moral universe to our own, and their dedication to historical fidelity renders the world squarely within the confines of the Viking system of values. System of values that view vengeance as honourable, dying in battle as your only way to heaven. By Viking standards, any and all measures Amleth takes to get his revenge should be celebrated, as the mere act of vengeance is so venerable. And I am his it's eventually revealed that the foundation of his mission, to avenge his father and save his mother, is not as clear cut as it might seem. His parents didn't have the idyllic life he remembered, in fact his mother is far happier with his father's brother Fjolnir. Despite this Amleth continues on, headstrong in his mission to avenge his father. Again this shows the worldview he has. All his life vengeance has dominated the way he thinks and acts. Not only does he have someone close to him to avenge, but Viking culture idolises such values. When his mother reveals the truth, he can't accept what he hears. Vengeance is so ingrained into him, to hear his mother cast doubt upon it is incompatible with his worldview, so he rejects it. It's only once he falls in love with Olga that Amleth seems to turn his back on vengeance. After barely escaping with his life after saving her, they both get on a boat and leave Iceland. In this moment Amleth's love has triumphed over his vengeance, he's ready to move on and forget about Fjolnir. However, it's also this love that forces him back to the island. When he learns Olga is pregnant, he understands that Fjolnir will stop at nothing to kill his children, so he jumps off the boat and returns to the island, determined to finally avenge his father, finally kill Fjolnir and finally get his vengeance. He maintains his brutal animalistic nature, he's still a bloodthirsty killer, but now this rage is channeled not by vengeance but by love. Love of Olga and love of his unborn children. It was prophesied that I must choose between kindness for my kin and hate for my enemies. And see what hope we have before us. The very reason Amleth has to leave the boat and has to go back to Iceland is because of vengeance. Not his, but Fjolnir's. Amleth has killed everything Fjolnir lives for, so naturally, Fjolnir wants his revenge. The time of wrath kindled revenge is upon us! Despite personally escaping the cycle of vengeance himself, coming to terms with what has happened and moving on with Olga, vengeance forms such a central part of their world that Amleth still can't escape it. Ultimately, it leads to a tragic ending for him. Despite personally overcoming his need to avenge his father, completing his character arc and coming out a better person, because of the cutthroat world he lives in he still meets his end. Both Amleth and Fjolnir die in the climax, however this is the way they would have wanted to go. Even the smallest of glimpses at Viking history reveals that dying in battle is of the utmost importance to these people. When viewing the ending through a 10th century lens, perhaps it's not as tragic as it might seem. Amleth has secured his passage into Valhalla and can find eternal rest in the fact that his bloodline will continue. However, when looked at from today's standards, we see Amleth reject a life of love, safety and fatherhood for a quick, glorious death, leaving Olga alone to raise their children. What could have been a film about a viking breaking free of the masculine forces that dominate their culture, instead sees a viking succeed in living up to these masculine ideals. 
Because Eggers places us so firmly in the medieval world, the parameters of success are defined by this world. It would break with historical fidelity if Amleth truly rejected his belief, as he is a Viking. You cannot kill me. Even if you were to strike me with your sword, it would not bite. It is not my time. I will die in battle. <laughs> While at first glance, the Northman may seem like a departure from the more intimate stories Eggers has told in the past. But if you examine the objectives of the film, the sense of continuity becomes clearer. In all his work, Eggers' primary objective has been to immerse us in an alien world. It might look like our world and at times act like our world, but the people in these worlds are entirely different. Their whole worldview is shaped by the period setting, their goals and the way they work towards them are firmly placed in a historical context. This is the main thread that Eggers weaves throughout his filmography, and although being different in scope, the Northman is just as committed to historical fidelity as his previous two films. Violence and vengeance are what dominated Viking society, so naturally it dominates the film too. Amleth will go to any length to avenge his father, while in The Witch or The Lighthouse it was supernatural forces that haunted the characters. In The Northman it's Amleth himself. I will torment the man who made my life a hell. The film offers us another take on how isolation mixed with outside villainous forces can lead to chaos. Only this time it's from the perspective of the outside force. Any modern standards of morality or happy endings are thrown out the window because the film doesn't feature modern characters. Amleth may be a bloodthirsty killer if you saw him today, but by Viking standards he's honourable and has rightfully earned his place in Valhalla. Vikings were not righteous, they murdered innocent populations and caused a wave of terror throughout Europe. This was made possible by their belief systems that put battle and victory and vengeance and violence above all. The Northman is a story about a man finding his place among Viking legends, complete with murder and terror, but most of all, vengeance.